J'accuse is a letter to the President of the French Republic, Félix Faure, in response to a declaration that Alfred Dreyfus performed a treasonous act against his country. The article, or open letter, was published on the 13th of January 1898 by Emile Zola. Emile Zola, born April 2nd, 1840 in Paris, France, was a very prominent novelist, critic, and political activist in the 19th century. He was well known for his theories of naturalism, which was a movement that adapted the principles and methods of natural science to literature. This literary style of writing proposed that man was a product of his hereditary characteristics and environment, motivated to follow instinct but harassed by his social and economic status. Zola's essay, Le Roman Experimental, became the manifesto of this literary style. Zola lived a life of hardship, losing his father at seven years old during the construction of the municipal water system and going through financial struggle with his mother. Life continued to bear its fangs at his life as he failed his baccalaureate exam. In failing this exam, he failed to further his studies and he spent three years in poverty until gaining employment in a publishing firm. In 1865, Zola published his first novel, La Confession de Claude, ultimately leave, choosing to leave this firm and continue to pursue his dream of becoming a well-renowned novelist. In 1898, after receiving praise as one of France's most decorated novelists and becoming the face of the naturalist literary style, Zola decided to turn towards engaging in the Dreyfus affair in an effort to defend Alfred Dreyfus. Alfred Dreyfus was a Jewish-French army officer who was convicted for treason in 1894, and this was the catalyst for the social divide between French society. At a very early stage in the 12-year case, Zola believed in Dreyfus's innocence, claiming foul play by the other French army officers. On the 13th of January, 1898, Zola posted the open letter, J'accuse, in the newspaper, Elorore, towards the President of the French Republic to reconsider his decision of accusation against Dreyfus, declaring that revolutionary action would take place if these injustices continue to occur in France. In the letter itself, he charged individuals of high power within the military as those responsible for the espionage. Major Dupuy de Clan was appointed to find the spy within the French military as he was considered an expert in graphology. Through his personal investigation, he claimed that the only Jew within the military was responsible for the espionage. In late December 1894, Dupuy testified against Dreyfus, using the handwriting as his evidence. Dupuy was promoted to lieutenant colonel after he supposedly exposed Dreyfus. However, in October 1897, news began to leak that Dupuy had falsified information against Dreyfus and protected Major Fernandad Walson Esterhazy, who was in fact the one committing the treason. Within the letter, Zola exposes Dupuy's actions by stating Dreyfus had been a victim of Major Dupuy de Clam's overheated imagination and of the clericalism that prevails in the military circles in which he moves, and of the hysterical hunt for dirty Jews that disgraces our times. Zola makes an effort at exposing the anti-Semitism of the French army. Though Major Dupuy finds out who specifically is responsible for giving away French military secrets, he keeps it hidden in an effort to destroy the image of a Jew. Within a portion of his open letter, Zola states that he accuses Dupuy of being the diabolical agent of a miscarriage of justice, and then having defended his evil deed for the past three years through the most preposterous and most blameworthy mechanizations. He states that as a way to denounce the major's efforts at falsifying documents and ultimately condemning Dreyfus for a crime he did not commit, the blatant disgust of Dupuy towards those of the Jewish community was extending past himself, however, to many other high-ranking officials in the army as he convinced them to turn against Dreyfus. 
General de Boss de Frey and General Gonzi were also in cahoots with de Putty as they had access to evidence that proved Dreyfus's innocence, but suppressed the exposure of this information. Within one portion of the letter, Zola refers to them by stating that they gave in to the religious passions of the circles they move in and the prejudices brought by a spirit the corpse. In other words, they remained loyal to a group that were corrupted by, by extremists of a religion that were against another religion, and thus were for the imprisonment of the innocent Alfred Dreyfus. All of the above actions were not only to denounce Dreyfus, but to cover the actions of the nefarious Major Ferdinand Watson Esterhazy. Major Esterhazy was the man responsible for spying on the French army by the Germans, and was covered for by the other men of power within the army. Evidence was made public of Esterhazy as the man responsible for spying and was subjected to a closed military trial in 1898 only to be found not guilty by the court. Zola recounts how this information was founded by declaring that Lieutenant Colonel Pickert had a special delivery letter addressed to Major Esterhazy by an agent of a foreign power. He then continues onward from this fact by stating that General Gonzi was convinced that Esterhazy was guilty and neither General de Bois de Frere nor General Billet questioned the fact that the board border dome was in Esther Hazy's handwriting. General Billet was ultimately one of the worst criminals responsible for hiding information regarding the conviction of Dreyfus. Billet did everything in his power to destroy any information leading to the innocence of Alfred Dreyfus and corrupted information regarding him as being a spy as well. Zola states that he is responsible for committing this crime against justice and humanity for political purposes so that the general staff would not lose faith. The letter that blamed the army for covering up its mistake in convicting Dreyfus ultimately led to Zola being put to trial. However, the letter managed to generate a lot of public support for Alfred Dreyfus to be set free and cleared of any falsified convictions. Zola, in using the public media to make a statement against the army, was brought to trial February 7, 1898, and was sentenced to a year in prison and a fine of 3,000 francs for being guilty of libel. Libel is a published false statement that is damaging to a person's reputation. After Zola's JQs, the Dreyfus affair was brought up again and Dreyfus went on to a new court martial. Dreyfus, though having his case reopened, was once again considered guilty for the crime of treason, however, managed to be pardoned by the President of the Republic. Felix Faure. It was not until 1906 that Dreyfus was cleared of all the wrongdoings he was considered to have committed. This was four years after the death of Emil Zola, September 29, 1902, who till this day is considered a hero of true justice.